Ashley here, and today I'm going to show you how to grow mushrooms from start to finish in an inflatable monotub. We will be following my 10 step process from inoculation to harvest and beyond. You will need four things to get started. Spores, a pre-made spawn bag, bulk substrate, and a boomer shroomer inflatable monotub kit. You can find where to buy these items on my FAQ page on boomershroomer.com. Starting with your spawn bag, once you receive it in the mail, take it out of the box and stand it up and release the filter. Sometimes the filter sticks to the bag and until you release it, no air can get in through the filter, which you need for colonization. Then I usually let the bag sit for 24 to 48 hours to let them breathe and pop up and see if any contamination grows before I start. I store them on a shelf at room temperature around 70 to 72 degrees Fahrenheit. Make sure the filter is facing up and the bag is out of direct sunlight. Some light from the room is okay. I also don't recommend the all-in-one spawn bags because they have less nutrients and are slower to colonize. I just recommend an all-grain spawn bag. Next, it's time to inoculate your spawn bag. There are three ways to inoculate a spawn bag. The first way is by spore syringe, the second way is by liquid culture, and the third way is by agar culture. When inoculating a spawn bag, being in a sterile environment is very important to try to reduce contamination. Using a laminar flow hood is the ideal way, but if you don't have that option, choose a room that has minimal foot traffic, preferably with no carpet. Then clean the room very well and I like to let the dust settle for about 30 minutes and then inoculate the bag. Before inoculating, make sure to spray everything down with 70% isopropyl before you start. That includes your clothes and hands, all of your equipment, your table, all the equipment around the bag, anything that might touch it, spray it all down. Also, if you can take a shower and wear clean clothes before you start, that is even better. Make sure not to use 90% isopropyl because it evaporates too quickly and does not properly sanitize the area. Now, let's inoculate a spawn bag with a spore syringe. Look over the spawn bag for any damages, holes, or contamination. Then spray and wipe down the spawn bag and the syringe with 70% isopropyl. Next, we want to give the bag a slight mix to let in some fresh air so the spores can germinate. Then, wipe down the injection port with 70% isopropyl. Now, let's prepare the syringe. First, give the syringe a quick shake to try to break up the spores. Next, we will attach the needle to the syringe. Open the needle and then open the syringe and carefully screw the needle onto the syringe. Then I like to squirt a few drops of liquid from the syringe. Then carefully insert the needle into the injection port and inject three to five cc's of solution throughout the spawn bag. Then cover the injection port with Micropose tape. Next, let's inoculate a spawn bag with a liquid culture syringe. If you're using LCs, it will work exactly the same as spores. Spray down the bag with 70% isopropyl and then attach the needle to the syringe. Finally, inject three to five cc's of LCs throughout the spawn bag. I like to put some of the liquid towards the front of the bag so I can see colonization faster. I also like to do two bags per syringe and I like to do them at the same time. I feel like this cuts down on contamination because if you let the syringe sit for a while with the needle on it, contamination can get in through the needle and cause problems for you later. Finally, let's inoculate a spawn bag with agar culture. Next, we will use a culture on agar to inoculate a spawn bag. Make sure to be in front of a laminar flow hood and to spray everything down with 70% isopropyl before you start. First, I like to save a few squares of the culture on a new dish of agar to preserve the genetics. Carefully cut a few squares from the culture and place them on a new agar dish, and then wrap the dish with parafilm. Next, cut the culture into eight slices. Then, cut open the top of the bag and carefully drop three to four chunks of agar into each bag. Then, heat seal the top of the bag and give it a thorough shake. After you have inoculated your spawn bag using one of the three methods, place the spawn bag on a shelf at room temperature between 70 and 76 degrees Fahrenheit. Next, we need to wait for our spawn bag to colonize to about 10 to 20 percent. This can take anywhere from 10 to 20 days for spores and 7 to 15 days for liquid cultures. 
Once the bag is about 10 to 30% calentized, it's time to do a break and shake. Break up the mycelium as best as you can and mix evenly in the bag with the uncolonized grain. Then put it back on the shelf to colonize fully. I store my bags on a shelf at room temperature with the filters facing up. You want to make sure not to close off the bag completely because it needs some airflow for colonization. Then over the next 7 to 20 days you will see your spawn bag colonize fully. Make sure not to place your bag in direct sunlight but some light from the room is fine. Then once the bag is fully colonized, it's ready to move our spawn to bulk. I like to make the bulk the day before I'm going to use it. If you end up making it before, that's okay. Just leave it in the bucket with the lid on it and it will stay sterile. Next, let's make our bulk substrate. You will need 500 grams of vermiculite, 500 grams of cocoa coir, and 100 grams of gypsum. Then you want to add 16 cups of boiling water. First, spray and wipe down your five gallon bucket with 70% isopropyl. Then pour all three dry ingredients in the bucket and mix them up with a spoon. Finally, boil 16 cups of water. Once the water comes to a complete boil, carefully pour the water into the bucket and then put the lid on it. Let the bulk sit for 24 hours to pasteurize and then it will be ready to use the next day. Don't use your bulk substrate when it's too hot or it'll kill the mycelium. Now we're ready to mix our fully colonized spawn bag with our bulk substrate. To start, spray and wipe down everything with 70% isopropyl. Start with the mono tub and thoroughly wipe and spray down every section. Next, spray and wipe down the liner and place it at the bottom of the monotub. The liner makes the monotub easier to clean and the cake shrinks with the liner when it grows which reduces side pins. Next, spray and wipe down all the plugs with 70% isopropyl and insert them into the holes in the monotub. This allows the tub to create more humidity while it's colonizing. Also, the plugs are not supposed to fit airtight. You do want a little bit of airflow during colonization. Next, it's time to break up our fully colonized spawn bag. First, spray and wipe down the bag with 70% isopropyl. Then, carefully start to break up the spawn in the bag. This spawn bag started to fruit in the bag. If this happens, send the spawn to bulk as soon as you can. Just break up the spawn and then pick out the pins before you put it in the tub. Next, prepare the bulk by mixing it up and making sure to have proper field capacity. For field capacity, when you have a full hand, it should feel light and airy to the touch, but when you squeeze it, you should be able to get a few drops of water to come out. Next, we need to cut open the spawn bag and pour all of the spawn in the bottom of the monotub. Try to break up the spawn as best as you can. Then start to take handfuls of the bulk and mix it thoroughly through the spawn. I like to use half the bulk and do a 1 to 2 ratio per monotub, which is about 3 pounds of spawn and 4 to 5 pounds of bulk. Then you want to evenly mix up the spawn and the bulk. The more even the spawn, the more even it will colonize and fruit. Also, I am no longer using a casing because I believe I can see colonization faster without one, which allows me to fruit faster and I ultimately get a fuller flush and more mushrooms. Once you have thoroughly mixed up the bulk in the spawn, start to lightly pack down the bulk to the bottom of the tub, but not too hard. It needs to be able to breathe. My bulk recipe makes enough for two inflatable monotubs, so you only need to use half of the recipe per tub. You can store the other half in the bucket with the lid on it for weeks, but eventually it will dry out and you will need to add more boiling water to bring it up to field capacity. Lastly, you want to carefully push out all of the air from the edges. Once the cake starts to fruit, if the cake is not pressed down enough, air can get through those areas and then pin and fruit on the sides. Which is fine, but we really want them to try to fruit in the middle. You get a fuller flush. Once you have all the spawn and bulk in the tub, put the lid on it and now the waiting begins. Try to keep the room that the tub sits in as sterile as possible. Using an air purifier has greatly reduced my contamination. I also have a heater with the thermostat set at 70 degrees Fahrenheit. It's important to maintain consistent temperature throughout the whole process. Each day you will see noticeable progress of the tub. 
First, you will start to see a light condensation on the walls. Then each grain spawn will start to grow and expand throughout the mycelium. Then after about five to seven days, the tub should be full of colonized and ready to fruit. No light is needed during this time, but some light from the room is fine. After about five to seven days, the monotub should be fully colonized and ready to fruit. Now we are going to start the fruiting process. We are going to remove all the plugs and put the filters in their place. Make sure to be as sterile as possible during this process. Spray yourself down with 70% isopropyl so you don't fan any mold spores into the tub. Then I like to spray the filters down with 70% isopropyl before I switch them out. Next, remove all the plugs and put the filters in their place. Next, we will start to fan the tub daily so we can start the fruiting process. You want to lightly fan out the CO2 sitting at the bottom of the tub so we can initiate the pinning process. But we also want to be careful not to dry out the tub or to add too much humidity. Now each day we will continue to fan the monotub for 10 seconds. Make sure to be as sterile as possible when opening the tub. You should not need to mist during this time. Humidity can fluctuate between seasons. You will notice more humidity during the summer and less during the winter. In the winter, I sometimes have to leave the plugs in to keep up the humidity naturally. This tub was fruited in the summer. Once you start to fruit, you will notice that the humidity in the tub may start to drop. That is okay. The first stage of fruiting is to see exudate, which is a clear or yellow liquid being excreted from the mycelium. They are little droplets that sit on top of the mycelium. Anywhere you see exudate, you will start to see hyphal knots. The next stage of fruiting is hyphal knots. They are small white dots that start to form where the exudate was. The hyphal knots will turn to primordia, and the primordia will turn to pins. This whole process can take anywhere from 5 to 15 days depending on what strain you are growing. Then every day continue to fan the tub for 10 to 15 seconds. Be careful not to fan too much because we don't want to dry out the tub. Then over the next 3 to 10 days you will start to see more hyphal knots and pins form. Once you start to see pins, then I would add some light. Make sure the light doesn't have any heat or it can dry out the tub from the top. Mushrooms don't need light to grow, but they will grow towards the light if they have it. They only need about 4 to 12 hours of light per day. Finally, the pins will turn to fruiting bodies and once the mushrooms start to break their veil, we are ready to harvest. Now it's time to harvest the mushrooms. First, I lay down some paper towel to put the mushrooms on. Also, make sure to be as sterile as you can during this process and make sure to spray yourself down with 70% isopropyl before you start. Then carefully twist and pull the mushrooms from the substrate and try not to disturb the cake but make sure to get all of the stem so the next flush can come in cleanly. If you do take some of the substrate, that is okay. Slowly harvest the whole tub until you get all of the mushrooms out of the tub. I like to harvest them all at one time, but you can harvest them as they break their veil if your flesh comes in a little uneven. Then I like to lay them on a paper towel with a fan and let them dry naturally over two to seven days. Once they are completely dry, you can store them in a container with a dry pack. Using the ones with indicated bees are really nice just in case you leave some moisture in the mushrooms. This allows you to see if, you, if there's moisture in there and then you can add additional dry packs later on. Heat and moisture can degrade your mushrooms. 
To initiate the second flush, first you want to make sure to get out all of the mushrooms from out of the tub so the next flush can come in cleanly. After you harvest the first flush, let the tub be for two days to see if the humidity naturally returns. Keep the temperature at 70 degrees Fahrenheit for best results. And the tub can have light or no light. I recommend having a light condensation on the walls of the tub. If you see your tub start to dry out, put the red plugs back in and wait 48 hours to see if the humidity naturally improves. If not, then you can use a fine mist spray bottle to lightly mist the walls of the tub. Finally, if your tub is extremely dry, you can rehydrate the whole tub with water. Check out my rehydration video for more information. There are a few ways you can continue the process. You can take a clone to agar, you can clone to LC, or you can make a spore print or, or swab. By making agar or LCs, you are saving the exact genetics of the mushroom you are taking. If you take a swab or a print, you are taking genetics of the strain that could potentially grow a thousand different ways. To clone to agar, I recommend being in front of a laminar flow hood. To start, you will need a fresh mushroom. I like to take the best looking mushroom from the flush. Make sure to be as sterile as possible. Spray yourself and your tools down with 70% isopropyl. Then pull the mushroom apart and with a sterile blade, carefully cut a piece of the mushroom and then place it on the middle of the agar dish. Then wrap the dish with parafilm and place in a tote at room temperature between 70 and 76 degrees Fahrenheit. To take a spore swab, take a freshly harvested mushroom that has just broke its veil and with a sterile swab, Carefully swab the gills of the mushroom and then place the swab back into the wrapper to store. Store the swab in a cool, dark place. Next, we will take a spore print. First, spray and wipe down the spore chamber with 70% isopropyl. Then, rip off a piece of aluminum foil and place it on the lid. Then, harvest a fresh mushroom that has broken its veil. Carefully cut off the cap with a sterile blade and place the cap gills down on the aluminum foil. Wait 24 hours for the spores to drop and then carefully remove the cap from the aluminum foil. Wait for your spore print to dry and then you can store your spore print. Spores will last years in a cool, dry place. For more detailed instructions, you can download my free mushroom growing guide. Thank you guys so much for watching, and if you have any additional questions, please feel free to email me at ashley at boomershroomer.com. Thank you. Bye.